My name's Gillian Ryford and I'm talking to you from Cape Town. So I've been really enjoying this series of videos through lockdown and I was a little uh, daunted when Giles asked me if I would consider submitting one given the company that I'm in. Um, but I've been thinking about the overall um, topic of creativity and isolation uh, and the work that the Samaritans do to help people uh, in this situation. And I thought maybe what I could do in my talk is just speak a little bit about my journey uh, from a different time of isolation, uh, but when I was forced into a situation that was quite difficult and quite redefining for me. And I landed up in a in doing something that I really absolutely love and that I feel in many ways allows me to connect with people and help people far better than when I was running an advertising agency. So very briefly, I ran the Low Group in South Africa. And at the time it was called Low Bull. We had nine companies and I ran that and we we're a great agency, we did a lot of fantastic work. And in 2006, my then partner came back from working overseas and he and I essentially had the same job. I went off to go and have a baby and, and I lo essentially lost the position in the company. Um, I was given a few options and in the end, I felt I had no option but to leave. And it was, it was a, a, a period of great, um, anxiety, sadness, uh, betrayal, uh, anger for me. I felt um, that I had lost something that I had built over time and something that really had come to define who I was and took up an awful lot of my time. Um, but I took from it some lessons and at the time I took three pieces of advice from different sources. The one was from an astrologist because obviously we go and consult an astrologist in times like this. And what the astrologist said to me was really interesting. He said, the biggest lesson that you have to learn is to give up status, to let go of status. And it became such an interesting thing because whether we like it or not, whether we think that we are egotistical or not, um, as we progress through this industry or any other industry, we, we, we get the trappings of the trade, don't we? We get the corner office, we get a slightly bigger parking bay, we get slightly more flexibility around starting times or how much leave you take or, or, or whatever. And, but also the industry knows you, you get invitations, you get, uh, sent Christmas gifts, you, if that's not against your company policy, you are very much fated and respected. And when you are out, you're out. It, it took me some time to realize that only you are responsible for whether people give a shit. Um, your position is no longer that thing that is going to actually draw people to you. It is what you have to offer them. Um, and so that was an interesting lesson from my astrologist. Uh, the second piece of advice that I took was from a friend who uh, routinely has to reinvent herself. And she said, you don't know how much you know until you get out there. And it was something that I really found to be true and something that, as we go through uh, this industry, we gather so many incredible skills that we think everybody has and they just don't, and they are so super valuable. So um, I'll come back to that one. The third piece of advice um, was from the same friend who routinely gets thrown out of companies because her style is quite brutal. Um, people pay her large amounts of money to go away, which I think is a brilliant strategy, but I've not never really be able to manage that um but she said to me make sure you've got a long enough runway to land your plane before it takes off again and i loved that i just loved that because immediately after i left i had 
you know, lots of approaches from people in the industry, from competitors, from whatever. And I just thought, I don't want to do the same thing again. I don't want to run another ad agency. I want to do something different, but I didn't know what that thing was. And I allowed myself to have that runway and I allowed myself to have a long enough runway. Um, and I negotiated an exit from my previous company that allowed me some freedom um, and some runway, but it was also more about being quite firm about which roads not to go down. And, um, and that allowed me to eventually find the things that I do want, did, did want to do. So I then I was sitting one night and watching TV in those days where you sat and watch TV and three bad ads followed one another in one ad break. And, um, I thought to myself, good grief. Uh, how is it that so much of advertising, when I say advertising, I mean any output, any creative output. How much of how much? What, how is it that so much of it is so mediocre, if not appalling? Um, you know, mediocre is 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 the better end of a lot of it. And I thought, isn't it amazing that you've got two groups of people sitting around a table at the beginning of a creative process, and they're both bright groups of people. They come together. No one sits down and says, "Let's make something." unbelievably mediocre that no one cares about and no one will see. No one says that. There's high hopes always. And I thought, what I want to do, I want to rid the world of bad ads. That was my mission. But also, I want to work with marketers and agencies and help them work better together so that they can collectively make better work. So I started doing some, some investigation. I started doing some research into what drives great creativity, what gets in the way of it um, and I came to the realization that relationships are obviously key but relationships aren't everything you can have a great relationship and have a terrible um, product at the end of the day so the notion of, 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 be of better skills better relationships and better results was born. So for me, I, I've seen it over time that relationships are basically underpinned by skills. And um, the IPA a few years ago published um, a little booklet uh, uh, called um, A is for Alliances, which I'm happy to send the link to you if you want, um, or I'll put it in the, in the bio. Um, and in it, they said that the drivers of relationships were, were in three buckets and that they were procedural, professional, and psychological. And the fascinating thing about skills is, is that it defines the procedural and the professional aspects of how the relationship actually works. So from understanding a workflow process to writing a good brief, to actually understanding how to evaluate the work that's put in front of you, to building a creative culture, um, to taking those, the, those risks. And, and all of that is kind of in, the, in the, the procedural and professional buckets. And for both sides, by the way, agencies and clients. Um, but the psychological bit, is is something that is underplayed and tiptoed around and something that i believe especially in times like this where we're all kind of questioning mental health and and staying sane we've got to really address the fact that a lot of agency client relationships are frankly just simply abusive and um so i've been called the uh the the, the industry doctor uh, somebody wants to find me as a cross between um uh, uh an agony aunt and a and a gorilla like a wartime gorilla not not the other type cadbury's gorilla um and the thing is is that because i'm i'm an i'm an outsider uh my business is ad therapy i go in and i do therapy i, I don't do actual therapy but people tell me all sorts of things and i do these partnership alignments where i get people on the same um, wavelengths and sometimes I have to have very very strong conversations and they're conversations that neither party feels that they can have um, so it's an interesting thing the fact that better skills then lead to better relationships very often I find in my partnership alignments that a bad relationship is based on one person who is out of their depth 
and really struggling. Um, and then that parlays into the relationship and the feeling of, of, of bullying. I want to play you a few words and I want you just to think about the depth of those words. Take a, take a look at these. Now, I mean, those are hectic words, come on. But imagine if those were in a personal relationship, they're absolutely appalling. But, but also agencies and clients are in a B2B relationship. It's, it is B2B, it's human to human. These feelings are real, whether they're in a business environment or not. The feelings are real and they're not great. So how do we fix that? My, my, my experience has shown that you've got to bang it on the head. And you've really got to say, look, it's unsustainable. If, if these feelings continue, if this way of working continues, um, it's not sustainable for the relationship, but it's also really just not good for the business because what you're not getting is the best quality work. And that's actually what the relationship is for. So thanks to the wonderful work by Les Benetti and Peter Field and James Herman and IPA and Can and all these wonderful people that are banging the drum, of creative effectiveness, we now have the arsenal to be able to say to people that there is a business consequence to bad behavior. And the business consequence is frankly that you're just not getting uh, enough of, of the good work. And so what I've been able to do um, as a result of my aha moment of these three absolutely abysmal pieces of communication that I watched, um, is to build a business that goes in and tries to help good people work better together. Um, I do that through consulting, but I also do it through a lot of training and I run a creative fitness program for marketers and I run a lot of workshops for agencies trying to help them understand uh, the client perspective, which is that the marketers are under siege in their businesses. So how they're not respected, um, by the CEO, they don't, they're not seen to add value. So market, marketers need agencies and agencies need to help them actually do the work that they need to do. And together they need to actually um, stand firm and, and deliver that good work. But a lot of marketers don't know what good work is. So just recently I've had three CEOs um, or CMOs contacting me from around the world saying, look, okay, yes, yes, we get it. Good work is now uh, to be expected. Um, but how do we get it? We don't know. We don't know what it is. And it's great that those questions are being asked. I like to think that by letting the light into the cracks that exist in those relationships is a way to help unlock the potential of them for the good of everybody in the relationship. And certainly the crack in my career let the light in for me. So in these mad times, give yourself some runway, maybe look at the cracks as a way to light the way forward. Thanks for watching and please consider donating to the Samaritans for the incredibly good work that they do. Click the red button. Thanks.